What's going on guys? It's your favorite console technician, AJ here. We are going to be replacing the power supply in this guy. So if you have any power problems and you want to replace the power supply, this is the video for you. All right. This right here is the Xbox One S. The worst part about this entire repair is this guy right here. So once you can get this off without breaking this, you're, you're a master. You don't need any more help. So we're going to take our pry tool. going to put it in this corner right here underneath the black panel. Like that. And we're just going to pry forward. Boom. We're just going to go along the whole side here doing that. It doesn't have to be too aggressive, but you definitely want to get it off. Cool. Once you get to this corner, don't pry this corner up. You're going to flip it back to this side and you'll see right here a little tab. If there's a sticker, just remove it. You'll see this guy right here, the most annoying part of this console. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it, our pry tool, we're going to go right here, kind of try to get it in. Don't do too much pressure, but just try to get it in there and slide it over. Boom. Now, if you pry up, you could break the tab. It's not the end of the world. It just kind of looks ugly, but it's totally fine if you do. If you just take an extra pry tool or maybe a flathead, you'll push down on this white piece, pull forward slowly, boom, perfect. Put this guy to the side. <clears throat> All right, now that the bottom of the console is exposed, we're gonna take out these six green screws. They're the main body screws. They hold the whole thing together. Cool. Now that all six are removed, we'll put them to the side. Don't lose them. Very valuable. Also, let's just take time to appreciate. These are nice looking screws. I love the color, like the emerald. Great for the Pacific Northwest where we're located, where Xbox, Xboxes are made. It's just a beautiful screw. Anyway, flip it over. You're gonna be holding it like this. You're gonna grab these on the ends put it face down and just pull them out. And this top piece will come off. Put this guy to the side, clean all this, it's gross. Okay, now we got this guy. That's a terrible noise. This guy, this top plate, comes right off. No screws needed, it's beautiful, it's awesome. All right, this right here, right here, power. This is the power supply, it's what we're gonna be getting rid of. We actually gotta take the hard drive as well as the power supply screws out on the back. So we'll flip it over. We're gonna be wanna be we're gonna wanna remove this screw here, 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 and here. So we got six of them. These are also uh, they're T eights slash T nines. I prefer a T nine because I think it grabs it better. Um, but you can use a T8. Just be careful not to strip the screws because they can be a pain to get out if they're stripped. Cool. Now that all six, are, six of the screws are out, we're gonna kind of grab this carefully. And you can feel the hard drive kind of fell out because we unscrewed it. Just make sure you kind of grab it, set it back in there before you pull it out. So we'll grab this guy. You can just kind of leave it to the side like this. Maybe not put tension on the wires. See, there's no tension. The wires aren't getting pulled. So just kind of set it like that. Now, the power supply. It's really dusty in there. Clean that stuff out. We're gonna pull this guy straight up until it does that. You're gonna rotate it like this. Now, this guy right here is where the it plugs in. If you see right here, see a little tab. That's the lock for the thing. So it can be a little tricky. If you don't have, I kind of have smaller fingers, so I can get in there, kind of pull at it, 
and pull up. Just push it in and pull up. If you can't do that, you can also grab some pliers, but just be really careful not to rip out any of the cables. You don't want to damage this, because if you damage it, you're in a world of trouble. But if you can, use your finger, kind of put it against this frame. You can pull slightly on the cables. Put it lightly against the frame and just pull up. And it can be really difficult. This is one of the harder parts, is getting this part out. But not too much pressure. Just gotta get in there, get it out. Man, this one's tough. I'm gonna go grab some pliers. Okay, I'm back. Got my needle nose pliers. Hopefully this makes it easier. Just be really careful not to damage the connector. So you're gonna grab it like this. Make sure to get the clamp. Don't grip it too hard, you don't wanna bend the plastic. Oh, see, you don't want, that's the one thing you don't wanna do is that. This guy can be really tough. Nice and gently, you don't wanna to pull too hard. There we go, got it. Jeez. I'm not sure why they decided to put the clip against this. Super rude, Microsoft, so if you're watching this, come on, bro. Just put it on this side. It's way easier. But this guy is still intact, no damage. That's what we love to, love to see. That's what we love to see. Cool. This power supply, if you're getting rid of it, toss it, garbage, whatever you'd like to do with it, maybe put it on the wall as a trophy for actually getting this thing unplugged. But do whatever you want with that. You're gonna grab a new one. We have them for sale on our website, joesd.com. Shameless plug. Okay, you're gonna grab your new one. This is definitely not the same one I just pulled out. It's brand new, it's, it's clean, it's pretty. Cool, so <clears throat> we're just gonna do everything we did, but in reverse. We're gonna plug this guy in. You may remember, you want the clip against the wall. Just gonna line it up and just press down. Make sure it clicks. Press down on the cables, make sure it's in. It's beautiful. Now, this part's a little weird. You're gonna hold it like this, upside down. Pull it like this and lay it down. Because you want the cable, right, this cable, to run along the top. Kind of wiggle it around. Look in here, in the power thing. Make sure that the pins are all lined up. It looks beautiful. This cable, lay it down a little bit. It will kind of pop up, but it's totally fine. Now you're gonna take your hard drive, do the same motion. You're gonna flip it over and set it in. Shouldn't move very much, that's perfect. You'll see that this is one of where <clears throat> this is where one of the main body screws goes. So you wanna make sure it's lined up. Cool. Now, you can go ahead and put this guy on, back on. To line this up, you can use the fan. Obviously that's where the fan goes, but I look at this little indent, this little indent. Set it down. Push it. Sweet, flip it back over. And we'll do it like this. Okay, now you're gonna see where we're, we removed the six screws. And now you don't wanna end up putting, obviously one of these guys in here and screwing it in. That would definitely be a problem. So the key here is that if you look and see, this says it's upside down, but see how it says C2? These are where the, these screws go, the C's. And these are the F's. See, F4 fits better. So I like to do the C screws first. Make sure everything lines up properly. It doesn't need to be extremely tight, just snug enough to where it functions. Now, if you look here, I'm pushing all the way down. 
it's because the hard drive is kind of floating up a little bit because it's upside down. So you just want to do it slowly. You'll feel it get a little tighter. And now it's pulled up. So if you can't quite get these screws to catch on the hard drive caddy, you can flip this the other way and do it from underneath if that's easier for you. Um, but I know that if I just do this slowly, it'll catch the hard drive caddy and pull it up. That's why I had trouble with this one right at the beginning. Now that I got those two in, this one should be better. Set it in. Boom. Perfect. We'll grab the top cover, this white one or whatever color it is for you. Set it down. This will be nice and clean. Obviously it won't be dirty like that. So you'll take the front. This is the front with this front PCB. You'll line it up with these buttons. See these buttons are the ones that press the, these guys. So you'll set it in. It doesn't need to be perfect right away. Just kind of wiggle it around, make sure it's snug. Once it's in, you can take it from this side. You'll pull these tabs out again, and you'll push the back thing in, the back plastic. You can do it one at a time too. I mean, these are really flexible, so you don't need to worry about breaking them. Obviously don't crank it all the way like to here, but they're pretty flex flexible, so don't worry about damaging it. But you want this to be flush on the back. That's how you know you put it in correctly as well as if you press the buttons, they actually press. Now, you can take the bottom cover and put it to the side because we almost forgot to put the main body screws in. Can you imagine? You know where they go because it says F right next to the screw holes, F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, and F6. Now this guy right here, that's not a screw hole at all. Don't ever put anything there. I'm not sure why they put a hole there. It's really rude, but Microsoft really decided they wanted to make this console annoying. All right, you'll screw these down. That you don't need to tighten them extremely crazy, but obviously you want them tight enough to where they hold they hold everything together. Because if they don't do that, then why are they even there? Sweet. This shouldn't fall out. You could shake it all you want. Nothing will happen. That's how you know you did that right. Now, putting this bottom piece back on, you'll line up this whole tab thing right here with this guy right here. You'll also line up. Do not get these confused. See this front USB? That's where this USB is. So and the button goes here. So don't, don't accidentally mix this up with the USB. They do look different, but they kind of look similar. You set the front end kind of first. Doesn't need to be perfect. Kind of can just set it on top. Make sure everything's lined up and then just push away. I like to start at the front, work my way up the edges. Boom. You have a brand new power supply. Everything should work. It turns on. You can game. You can destroy kids in Call of Duty, Fortnite, whatever you're playing. Awesome. So that's how you replace the power supply on your Xbox One S. If you have any questions about the Xbox One S or any of the other Xboxes, please feel free to ask questions down in the comments below. We check them all. We try to answer them all. Also, if you do not feel comfortable doing the repair yourself, you can send it into us at joesde.com. We, uh, we repair Xbox One S's, Xbox One X's, PS4 Pros, and we're working on getting a lot more to repair. If you want any of the tools, these pry tools are really, really handy, especially for the Xbox One S. You can get them on our website as well, joesde.com. Awesome. It's been your favorite tech ninja, AJ, working on consoles with you. Hopefully this fixes your issue and can get back to slaying noobs. All right, guys. Peace out.